let's bring that into the discussion. Let's talk about Cleopatra. Yeah. So, so yeah, when we're when we're thinking about now first line um, uh, therapy for HER2 positive disease, the Cleopatra study, uh, which randomized about 800 women uh, in a in a double blind placebo controlled manner to docetaxel uh, with trastuzumab uh, and pertuzumab versus docetaxel, trastuzumab, and placebo. Um, this, this trial, uh, which was just recently updated by uh, our outgoing ASCO president, Sandy Swain in, in Lancet, um, showed not only an, it's, it, a very impressive progression-free survival advantage, but an overall survival benefit. Mm -hmm. So the, the addition of this uh, second antibody, which targets a different um, domain on, on um, the HER2 extracellular domain, the dimerization domain, contributed significantly in terms of efficacy, but really didn't cause a whole lot more toxicity, um, some diarrhea. Um, so, th yeah, this is really a new um, standard of care. Um, actually, at my institution, it's no secret that we tend to lean in the direction of weekly paclitaxel as opposed to Q3 weekly docetaxel. Um, actually, at this meeting, my colleague, Dr. Chow Dang and Farah Datko are reporting our own experience showing the safety and efficacy of weekly paclitaxel, trastuzumab, and uh, pertuzumab. So this is, uh, again, the bar that I think TDM1 or TDM1 and pertuzumab is going to have to beat, not docetaxel and yeah. trastuzumab. The problem is there's no comparator. That's going to be, that's, that's, that's the right. issue. There's you a know, comparator? Yeah, it'll yeah. Do, no, but it'll be kind of crossed because if um, the, or the taxane and trastuzumab is even equal, even equal, but, you know, the TDM1 based on your the data may be, may be better, but even if it were equal, there's no alopecia. And you know, and then if you add on the pertuzumab, it shouldn't make a difference whether you're adding the pertuzumab to taxane Traz or TDM1 if they're identical or even. So I, I think it's okay. Right. I, I think. I think if you're going, I think at the end of the day, yeah. if you make cross trial comparisons, and you look at the winning arm of Marianne, mm -hmm. if it's TDM1 and pertuzumab, and you look at the winning arm of Cleopatra, and they look very similar, the toxicity profiles will probably be the the driver of. of Practice. Versus expense, however, right. there's expensive therapy. Well, I think that there, uh, that's the question. Is it more, if you add TDM1 to pertuzumab, it's going to be really out of sight. Correct. So that's, that's going to be a big issue. Also, I, th I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens to people with brain mets, since we know that TDM1 in particular doesn't protect from brain metastases. And is there anything that works differently? We had people who stayed on TDM1, you know, they, after we did the original phase two trials. We all did. And uh, you know we messed around with their brains for years. They stayed on TDM1 with what systemic mean, disease what control. Do you, mean you mess around you know, with they their had brains. Stereotactic. That? That's, that's what we do. Here. We do a little <laughs> radiation. <laughs> we take out a little bit. Right. We do this. You know, we re-radiated them. We like oh, okay. <laughs> patients getting we stereotactic radio surgery four or five times. Right. You know, but you keep them on the TDM1. But you kept them on the TDM1. So it's really interesting. And I do wonder if the pertuzumab, trastuzumab, taxane will have any difference in that. I mean, I don't know. The taxanes do better job but yeah well our radiated patients you know the trastuzumab may be crossing the blood-brain barrier that old data so if, if you're radiating them it's maybe getting in a little bit better than in yeah, the because we really don't have any it. real data right with right. TDM1 because right. that comes up in practice quite a bit you yes. know, you've got somebody who's got brain meds do you give her a shot you know at um, mm -hmm. maybe she's progressed a little bit in the brain I've you know, I'm, I'm, I'm using it. I'm, I'm using it because we don't have a whole lot of options, you know, yeah. to treat those. And you can always use the local things, as you point out, but a lot of people have a, multiple meds. It's a little sure. hard to do too much uh, fine-tuning. Right. I don't think, I think the data they have so far suggests that it doesn't do much for brain meds uh, compared to, say, keeps hiding even, you know, where we've seen some shrinkage. But another question this all brings up is where, where are we going to be using drugs like lapatinib that has been our second line, third line agent? What about Everolimus with the Bolero 3 study and how all of these therapies which are expensive and some have more toxicities than others, how are we going to sequence them going forward?